before we begin, I want to thank this month's sponsors for the program, who are Roz Lane and David Bench. As many of you probably all know Dr. Sweeney already, so I don't need to go into, you all know he's superintendent of Bowles for at least another few months. <laughs> if you don't know it, he's retiring this year. So, <laughs> so which means he'll be available for us more. Yes. <laughs> Notice how I just, you know. Um, well, today he's going to be talking about his, uh, he did a trip to China this year, and he's going to tell us how that went, and uh, he also does a lot of work with uh, an orphanage over there, so he also visited the orphanage, and it's really interesting. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for being here. I think I can use my teacher voice and don't necessarily have to be locked in next to the mic. So are we good on our AV? Um, thank you for coming out today. Um, it's an intimate group. You're as important. Uh, it's better to have you than 100 people here. Um, had a little technical difficulty, so I hope this is interesting to you. I'm typically pretty informal when I do presentations. Um, for some of you people that I haven't met, I've been superintendent at Bowles, had the honor of being superintendent at Bowles ISD for the last um, 33 years. And I've been in education 44 years. And I was hired as superintendent at Bowles when I was 29. I was much too young, but um, they, they thought I could do the job. And it's, it's been a good year, uh, many years uh, in progress there. We started out with, when I arrived, 156 students. And presently we're at 540. And uh, over 400 transfers coming to us from 17 different school district besides ours. So it's a really unique situation. In conjunction with our uh, preacher, Randy Daw, passing away, who many of you probably know, that, that was kind of a shocker. So we decided this might be a good time. And we're, the board is actually in the process now of uh, looking for a successor and hope to have one announced uh, by early June on that. And maybe I'll stay on and help with that. Um, I had the opportunity to go to China the last two years. There are about 12 to 15 years ago, there was an effort in China through their tourism bureau where they actually put in about $10 billion to really promote China and its educational system. And they said they established these Confucius Institutes. You, they've been somewhat controversial the last couple of years. I think A&M College Station just uh, withdrew their membership. It was last spring, in fact, when we were doing the search for Dr. Rudin. Um, I had visited with uh, the vice chancellor and they had actually um, asked the Confucian Institute to leave. So there is some controversy about um, proprietary type information that maybe they might be gaining while they're in the United States. But I did join them two years ago in November and most of the slides will actually be from this most recent trip was actually um, in the Jiangsu province. Two years ago we actually went to Beijing and then my um, colleagues, we went, our group went up to Shandong. It's actually the home of uh, Confucius. We uh, visited many schools. We had a forum. They gave me a warning day before and said, you're presenting uh, the next day. And I said, wow, thanks for giving me notice that I'll be speaking to a group of a couple hundred people. And one of the high school students did a great job helping me prepare that document for that speech. But that was a very interesting trip. But most of today's will actually be dealing with the um, Jiangsu province, which is just out of uh, Shanghai and has 72 million folks in that province. And then while I, when I was, before I was going on this trip, my kindergarten friend who still, we talk daily, said he's on the board of Agape Asia, these orphanages that we uh, oversee and manage in China and now moving into India also. He said, you're taking a side trip. I said, no, it's busy enough. My life is busy. He insisted and pushed me and encouraged me. And it was one of the best things I ever did was seeing how the orphans lives and the work that we're doing. In, um, and it's just, it's in Zigong, just outside of Chengdu. There's Chongqing and Chengdu um, cities. And so we flew to Chengdu and then we went to the orphanage in Zigong. So you'll see uh, some of those pictures. You'll see the, school that we, the schools that we visited, the professional trip, and then you'll see the orphanage in this trip. And I think I was there like 12 days. My wife is gracious enough to let me go on those, or maybe she's glad to get me out of the house for a while, John, and get a, get a break for me. So let's have the technology work. Let's see what happens here. This trip was actually in November of 2018. Uh, that's Dr. Wei Li. He's a professional friend out of Houston. He is a professor at uh, Lone Star College. This was his friend that we went to visit on Sunday as soon as I flew in. 
She's uh, getting her doctorate in British literature. And Chinese are really interesting. Like that lady there, her, um, her uh, husband lives in Toronto with their son. And then they see each other. She's putting education first. They, they put their career ahead of a lot of other things. But um, this, uh, the slides are a bit jumbled. This is an irrigation uh, uh, system that we visit it dates back to 256 BC. But we'll have some more uh, pictures of that momentarily. So Dr. Wei Li, he's out of Houston, and uh, we did the professional trip together. We're still working on um, several projects. It's very interesting. Here we are in Hunt County, and just, you know, the Kentucky Derby finished Saturday with a weird ending. And yeah, it is still going on. So I heard yesterday, I thought, and I, I don't bird walk too much. I'll be careful not to. But the track was actually set up for like 16 horses to race. And they had over maybe 20 or 22 horses there. So they're taking on that challenge. The weekend before that, though, if I can, if, if, if you think about this, here sits Innovation First out here in our county that we live in. They held in Louisville the week before the Kentucky Derby. They held the largest robotics competition in the world. And so when I went to China, you know, and I kind of bragged a little about being from this area, Innovation First. Oh, you really know a lot about robotics. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. Well, I don't, but we have gotten into, into VEX Robotics. There's about three different robotics uh, programs in schools. There's the first program, which... Um, is a much more expensive one for schools, but it's a very good program. Greenville has all of them, by the way. Uh, actually, they don't have BEST. BEST is one that uh, universities uh, promoted and started, and Bowles does that in high school, and we actually got second in the state. This year, our, our project was to clean up the pollution gyros, gyros in the ocean, and just to hear those kids, how they build these robots and develop this is amazing. And then we got into the middle school. We got into the VEX Robotics, which is here in our hometown. So when these kids go to competition, this is all going to fit into this. When they go to a competition, they set up alliances. You two have met, never met maybe, but you're, you have your robot there. Meet one another. You have about an hour or two to communicate your strategy uh, to pick up the hubs, as they were called this time. They have a different competition each year. Oh, but you're, you speak Mandarin. Oh, you're from uh, Portugal. Oh, you're, what are we going to do there? So they actually get out Google language and the kids are strategizing together, talking with their iPhones or whatever phone they might have, uh, strategizing what they're going to, because they earn the points together as a team. And it, it's really a neat concept. It, it's really uh, very interesting. So I think we got, this is our first year to go to World, just to put us into perspective, but to go to World is an honor. I think Bowles was like 60 out of 86. So we were in the bottom third or maybe in the top two-thirds, however you, you want to measure it. It might sound better in the top two-thirds. But it just amazes me that out of um, our little town or community is Innovation First that's impacting the world. I just met with a gentleman this morning, um, uh, Herman, I um, forget his last name. He, he was in from China. He, works, he handles all of the Asian uh, Innovation First programs for all of Asia. And we are actually establishing uh, two summer camps at Bowles ISD in a Bowles home this summer where groups are going to come in and collaborate with our kids and have camps uh, on our campus. So I think that's kind of neat. His group will actually be coming from Shanghai and the other group will be coming from a different city, Nanjing. And you'll see some pictures of that. So we'll move on. Um, better work. Very common to be in a park and people exercising. Dr. Wei Li, I pushed, I said, go do it. He said, sure, I'll get in there and uh, exercise. Every day, senior citizens are out in the parks walking, moving, dancing, uh, judo, tai chi, all that stuff is going on every day. That happened to be a Sunday. I wish I could play the music to this for you. These kids are very skilled in their fine arts program. We'll have some. Uh, with some music uh, for you momentarily. Uh, this is the city that I actually stayed in for my professional week while I was there. Um, why I included this, the East China Sea is here. Um, beautiful hotel I was in. 
but they in all these cities they're getting where they're very modern with all these subways they're building throughout all these cities and their interstate highways for lack of a better term are very good shape they don't allow certain tonnage or weightage on those roads so their infrastructure is developing very quickly in all the cities and this is, is an example of where I was I think I said Nanjing this is actually Nantong is where I was at I went to this is our first visit to one of the schools the kids want to take a picture of me they love being with Americans I kept telling them not John Wayne but uh, I was visiting I was doing some FaceTime with my daughter um, she just randomly called me ten dollars a day and your phone works in China I'm mean, just instantly no problem so she FaceTime me and she's talking and a, a girl just comes over and takes a picture you know I said dad what'd that girl do just take a picture and I said that happens all the time Kara and so it, it was kind of cute um, this would be a typical looking um, campus I think they had about four thousand this is an elementary school I believe they had four thousand students at this campus kids were all excited to have us on their uh, campus that day they play basketball. Uh, uh, Chip, you're very observant. Hold on for a minute, Mr. Good Student. Give him a star, Susan. Yes, there is a there is a basketball court. How do you figure it's elementary, John? Okay. All right, here we go. All the schools we were in with kids had uniforms on. Yes, we did go to some private ones. That's a good question, John. This particular one is public. I don't think I included any pictures. But in the high school we went to, John, uh, they were still there like at 6, 6.30 at night, the students were. were very long days. Take education extremely serious. Uh, this is Sunny. She is the lady that's over all of the Jiangsu Province Exchange Program for North America, um, United States, and Canada. And we're actually working through her. This thing really grew. <laughs> I developed a really good relationship with these folks, and they like me, so they came. They, they actually have an office in California, so they made a trip to Texas mm, a month or so ago. And we got a meeting with the governor's office, economic development, Mr. James Chen. And we're going to bring in October, uh, they already had planned a, a professional group of principals, 40 of them, up to 40 of them, going to New York. But they were so impressed with Texas and what we we're going to offer them. They're actually going to take five days out of that trip and come to Texas and then maybe move it to Texas in the future. So in October, We'll, we'll be uh, hosting those principals in Dallas area through our Educational Service Center at Region 10, and then we'll disperse them to schools in that area. They won't come out this far, but we do have Texas A&M engaged. If they, if that, that's always an option in the future. They want to be involved in every way that they can. And then they're going to, they loved Austin as we took them around the Capitol and those places. So they're going to do a couple days in Austin. We have them uh, linked up. We met with Texas Education Agency, so we'll have a uh, forum down there and then we'll uh, put them in a school and for a half a day in that area and their theme this year is STEM so that's what we'll emphasize with them so Sunny, Sunny's group and us, in fact I just had a conference call yesterday uh, concerning that any questions so far? well yeah the, the soft date for that is like August 1st somewhere in there I don't want to ever retire. I, I love my job. I'd stay there forever. They don't even have to pay me. Well, I do have to eat something, but um, I, I don't want to retire. So I, I, this, this might be one of the activities that I get involved with, is doing something like this. Um, typically, well, typic well, they'll definitely let me go to that because they're bringing them here and we're hosting them. So these are some slides of the kids. Lots of ca calligraphy, fine arts going on, um, paintings, very friendly students excited to have us.
these kids are working on an environmental project of uh, things in the ocean, and they're putting them in this ocean uh, environment right behind them, as a matter of fact. Yeah. This little girl's making a silk rose. In fact, the whole room, they're making silk roses, and she'll present me with hers when she finishes it. Yeah, give you lots of gifts. A lot of physical activities. Judo, Tai Chi, swords. This is a cute one. It sounds like Texan, the song. And it's cowboy. Need a little better sound system. Susan, I guess we have that all the way up. You can see a lot of the housing in the, except it gets a lot taller than that with buildings and more intense. Um, pollution. Yeah. When the week before I went to Shandong, that was the trip year before this. Uh, wow, it's beautiful here. And the, the pollution was so bad they had to shut down all the factories a week before we got there. So th that is an issue. Now, I was telling you all that robotic stuff. So they found out I had all these skills, supposedly, with Vex Robotics. So they set up this private dinner in the Moscow room at this fancy hotel, private chef and all that. Dr. Wei Lee, myself, and Principal, Principal Mo, she's the one that's bringing over. And I'm sorry I don't have the exact numbers, but for the last week in August, first week in, um, uh, last week in July, first week in August, they're bringing over like 20 students that are going to do Vex Robotics. No. They'll go to Houston for a few days, but we have a lot of cultural things like the museum. Talk about Claire Chennault. Have you all, have you noticed on the uh, Highway 24 to Commerce, Flying Tigers Highway? Who knows what that means? Okay, most everybody here. Other people look at that and um, wonder what it is. That actually represents Claire Chennault and the Flying Tigers that kept the Burma Road open and actually helped China survive through World War II. So Claire Chanel being born in commerce. But Susan, can we have permission to bring the kids here to the museum? We'll work around your sketch, whatever you tell us. Oh, you do? Well, we'll try and coordinate it with you the best we can. Yeah, I can help with the tour, not as good as Susan. So this is the group that we're at Johnny. Um, does anybody know Johnny Tharp? Okay, so Johnny retired from Greenville. And he was like from the founding of VEX, understands all these robotics. And he started his career 10, 12 years ago with Bullseye at age 50, I think he was. And he taught math for us and did a great job. And then he moved on to uh, the charter school out here and put a couple years in, in their robotics. And then he went to Greenville and handled all their elementary and middle school VEX robotics. And so last year when I was up at um, World Competition in Louisville, I ran into Mrs. Tharp walking uh, on a Sunday afternoon, and I said, well, how are you and Johnny doing? He said, well, Johnny's retiring. And I said, well, he needs to consider coming to Bowles. So Johnny actually works about uh, six or eight hours a week for Bowles ISD. He's kind of the force behind all this, understanding it so well. So that's why when Herman called me, uh, this gentleman from Innovation First said, I have this group in Shanghai, an advanced group that wants to come to Texas and have a summer camp. Do you know anybody? I said, well, I know a guy named Johnny Therby. He goes, I know Johnny very well. I thought he retired. I said, he sure did. Now he's working for Bowles. And so that's why Herman came this morning to explore our setting. And he said it'll work just fine for that group to come in. So Johnny Tharp is invaluable to us and to a lot of people. Um, so that, that was the planning of that. So now here, I got this concept. And Johnny said, quit bragging about that publicly, but I'm still going to brag. At that table, we made a video. And it was, my concept was, we're going to collaborate as one team, one in China, one in Bowles, and we're going to enter one robot. And we talked to Innovation First, and they said, it's legal, and we might be the first one in the world to ever enter a robot 
that is built from two countries. So then, you know, we we'll use Skype and Zoom to build it as we'll actually start it this summer while they're at Bowles, and then we we'll just keep building on it. And the other part of it, the lady Sunny is they're working on sponsoring a dozen, excuse me, about a half a dozen of our kids. Um, since their kids are coming in July and August, we'll have a half a dozen that'll go over there at Christmas time, just after Christmas, day after Christmas. And it looks like they'll sponsor it for our kids, the trip. So that's kind of exciting. We just have to pay, the individual have to pay their airfare. So, and we'll send some adults with them. Um, so we might be the first dual country robot to enter VEX World Robotics. would that be cool? Um, uh, just a couple of pictures, some of the food. Really different, and they weren't big on sweets. A lot of vegetables, uh, fruit, and those type of things. A lot of different stuff that I didn't eat. Um, you can see I don't have any problem eating, but uh, in, in uh, Szechuan, the food is very spicy, so I had to be very careful down there. But people were very gracious to me. Uh, What's their diet mostly? Was it a lot of fish? A lot of fish. Uh, duck, duck, of course, rice, yes. Chicken or? Uh, not as much chicken. A lot of duck. Fish. Yes. Not much meat? No. Not much dairy either. This is the group. Um, is there a reason for that? Yeah, what is it? That's what I was told. Very, very so, doctor, is that true? Can tolerate Can't tolerate the it's milk, like lactose. See? I didn't find any cheese, yeah, no cheese no wherever I was at. Um, this was the group of colleagues that I was put with. Uh, Spain was represented. Uh, Finland. Is Finland next to Russia? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're adjacent, right? Okay. So she's from Finland. You know, how many, what's the population of Finland? You know, you, you interact and you study all this. Don, what would you think? Just take a guess. Take a guess. That's what I would have guessed. Anybody else? I think there's only like 5 million people. And yes, yes, yes. You can check me, but I think that's what I found out. Um, these folks were from the Netherlands. Now, that's interesting, too. What's the population of the Netherlands? Don, give it another guess. I would have thought 50 million, 15 million. But yet they have all these... Uh, Banks and everything else, they control a lot of stuff in the world. And the rest, oh, this gentleman's a lawyer on a school board in California, and they just took 40 kids <laughs> back over there, and myself, and he was a principal, I believe, and uh, the other Chinese folks were part of the school system. I presented him with a Dan Flynn hat, seal of Texas, all that, you know. They get, they get tired of me bragging about Texas. Um, oh, that was a, that, that they were building those kites, kind of fancy kites, right? So Dr. Earl will figure this out, but I don't know what type of nut this is off a tree and this little tassel or whatever, they added that and added this, but, and painted it, of course, it's like a wood. And uh, they slit that hole in and they glue these or whatever on those kites and they whistle as the kites are way up in the air. Yeah, we'll just pass it around. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, whistle? Yeah, whistles. I tried to make it whistle, but uh, I wasn't able to. That, those just, that's just a couple of the kites in this room. Okay, so now we're off to the orphanage. This is the Jackson Family Orphanage in Zigong. And uh, these are vulnerable children that we're helping feed and care for. They, they take very good care of their facilities. At nighttime when they put you to bed or say, hey, there's your room, they give you two blankets that thick and said, I hope you stay warm under them because there's no heat there. And you wear your jacket. <laughs> it's really a different experience. But the kids do very well. They're full of life. They're happy. Uh, they're very clean. I think if I don't have the bunk room picture, boys in one, girls in the other, but all they have are those, uh, a tote. That's every, their whole life is in that tote under the bed is all they have. But the, yes. Um, it's primarily Church of Christ. It's a, Agape Asia is what it is. Uh, been 20 years. There's five orphanages in China, and we're partnering with a few orphanages. I don't know exactly how many in India that we're just starting up. So your take on orphanages, if there wasn't uh, the 
the international support, would there be a problem with children and, and orphanages in China? Oh, how, this is very interesting. What are you asking me, Chip? Because this is really a loaded question. Thank you. Why did this come from international? You know, I, I got invited to... Do they have their own? No, in fact, I went to the... Uh, I went to the... Chi probably don't care. Uh, I went to the Chinese, uh, Dallas Chinese Chamber of Commerce banquet. I got invited, and I'm meeting all these people, and who are you? And well, I said, well, I'm kind of... Yeah, that's good. They're done. I, I'm um, with Agape uh, Asia and one of the gentlemen lawyers. Said, that's disgusting. We don't even take care of our own children that, that we don't do that. So um, they're very, there's a lot of respect when we tell them what we're doing there for the children. Uh, one girl that was left at a hospital by somebody, uh, her parents, um, Zen Zen, finally got open heart. She's about 16 right now, and all they said was she's going to die because her circulation was horrible. Her hands were blue and that. Well, miracle of God, about two months ago, uh, we got her open heart surgery or the bypass in China. We tried to take care of stuff there. Uh, the whole cost of that was $13,000. Now, on these other extreme medical cases, which we don't do a whole lot, but we've helped some very serious ones, um, we bring them over to the United States. If we can't get it done there, and a lot of that work is done for free. Some of it is done it here uh, in Dallas. Um, thousands of dollars that is actually uh, given to us. Mayo Clinic has done some. I, I, uh, University of Michigan up there, I know they have. Do you get any backfire from the government on the health you're getting that, that they obviously don't care about? Well, we can't proselytize the kids. We're just really taking care of them and... Uh, teaching them good life skills and that type of thing. We have to, we did get our NGO, non-governmental organization, uh, that's required to have that. W that's an interesting question, because when I was there, every four hours, two hours, the phone would ring, and this brash voice would come on there, and da 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 da, -da and Hannah, you'll see Hannah, she's the direct, she is an angel. Um, you know, she wouldn't let me uh, buckle my own seatbelt. I'm like, Hannah, I can do this. But finally I said, okay, buckle my seatbelt for me. Um, this guy, uh, the gentleman, he was over some type of the police, and he was checking on me. Everywhere we went somewhere, we had to report in. And then finally when we went to the uh, Dinosaur Museum, I met him. And he was a very nice man, but they were checking on us like every two or three hours. Yeah. And she reported in. They had a good relationship. In fact, what just a... Uh, offset story when we first landed, Hannah said, like, Sigong, where the orphanage is, is two hours from Chengdu, where that's the capital of Suasan. She said, Do you mind if we stay here and take care of some business? And uh, I said, No, no, you're here in the city, take care of it. So she goes over to the Education Bureau and we walk in. She said, Sit there, Dr. Wei Li's interpreting everything. And we're sitting there and he whispers to me, He said, This is not going well at all. Because I could hear the intensity in the speech. And finally, he goes, hey, sit back. It's going really good. She, he was doing everything she wanted him to do. She's a really neat lady. Um, oh, so on a Sunday, we went out to this farm. She had made, coordinated with this young farmer to get fig trees for the orphanage. She just, they grow a lot of their own food right there. He's going down in to find the fig trees for us. And when he finished, she said, well, how much do I owe you? So, no, the work that you're doing, I'm donating these to you. Yeah. I'm just amazed at all. Doc, don't ask me what plants those are. I don't remember what they are. I'm sorry. You might know what they are. Bringing the fig trees out of the... Yeah, those are figs. And I forget what these are that you picked while we were there. So we had a house church. Churches are not real common there. Uh, Mary is a dentist. We were at her apartment. The gentleman that was over here didn't have any arms. He was born that way, but he's a famous artist in China and paints with his mouth. Uh, Dr. Wei Li, myself, and there's Hannah that protected me the whole trip. She wouldn't let me. In fact, um, one day uh, near the... How are we doing time-wise, somebody? Are we okay? You take care of it. Well, I don't... Oh, if I'm boring, I don't want to... Okay. So... Um, oh, so... Uh, 
the day, a couple days before we left, Dr. Wei Li said, we're going to Chengdu, they're going to take us to Chengdu, and then I want to go see this temple that I've always wanted to see of the certain dynasty all my life. It was right there in Chengdu, fine. Then he takes us to this irrigation center, and on this, he said, okay, it's going to cost you $100 for two nights in a hotel. We're going to go see the Panda International Center, and we're going to go to this irrigation center. And I said, oh, that's very reasonable. In those two, each day I walked eight and a half miles. And, uh, and one of them was up a mountain that I, I think I showed it to you at the beginning, or maybe I missed it, but they had these guys that'll carry you. And I said, I'm not going to embarrass myself. Next time I'll pay whatever they want to carry me up that thing. My, my feet hurt. There was a pharmacy next to the hotel and there was a, a, a doctor's office. I went in the pharmacy and I didn't know any better doctor, sir, but I bought some of those uh, heat pads and I put them on my feet. And oh, that felt so good with the ibuprofen, but it didn't do my feet very well. They felt good, but I burned the skin with them. Okay, where are we going next? Come on. Oh, okay, so I just threw this in there. So uh, Vex Robotics is in Wuhan, and that's who I met this morning. That's his office. And he's actually, I arranged this morning, he's going to send back, he's going to send somebody, he said one of his lieutenants to go to Chengdu to meet with Hannah, to meet with the education department about getting, yeah, there's China there. Th this was a year ago, not this past year. These folks happen to be from Shanghai. They may be one of the, some of the kids that are coming to see us this summer. I don't know at this point. We're still in communication. That, that's a big, who's friends with Tony Norman and Bob Mimlich? But, was he in? Yeah. I can, was he? Yeah, go back. Okay. No. Go the other way? The other way. Well, I jumped on you. I'm sorry. So that was a Bogavia. Hannah and the kids have planned all those Bogavia. Now we went to the dinosaur museum. That was the tail of the big dinosaur. World-renowned Zigong. And I'm trying to find out. I think it's rated like one of the ten best in the world. Those are mannequins down there. That's an actual site in the museum. Um, it's, it was amazing. Then they forced me to stuff that in my suitcase. I said, I don't need a gift. Hey, so I love it. I put it on the front table, see it every day when I go by. Zigong is where that is. That's the Bougainvillea they plant everywhere. Isn't that beautiful, the way that's growing? So that got interspersed in there. Those are the kids at the VEX program. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, folks. Oh, let it let it rotate on its own. Okay, it, it might be the next one that rotates. Yeah, that's what you're telling me. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are the uh, Tony Norman and Bob Mimlich. These are the owners of Vex. Yeah, just local guys that did well. Yeah. Okay. Some of these scroll through, that's why, okay. Back at the orphanage. Said oh, go ahead. The professor from China teaches at a college here, Lone Star. Oh, Dr. Wei Li that went with me, he is a, that thing's going to move on me, but that's, that's a merchant area where it's really cool where they have this irrigation. Look how fancy this bridge is. I'll come back, John. Okay. That's yeah, I didn't mean to jump around. Oh, yeah, it's on its own. Yeah, I wish it waited for a minute. I think it stops here. So back in, I think I told you the beginning when this irrigation system was set up, but nobody's going to remember that except Chip. Yes, Don. Yeah. Susan, two stars for Don. 256 BC. Bamboo with rocks in it, and they would just use those as gates somehow, letting up the water through. It's very, it's very strong river. John, since that's steady for a minute, what was your question? Oh, oh, Dr. Whaley is a professor in Houston at Lone Star College. It's a community college, but there's, I think it might be one of the largest in the world. It's like 55,000 students with several campuses in Houston. Um, he, he, he taught English, but now he's uh, emeritus and he just works with international projects with them, taking students to China. Yeah, and it was a blessing being with him to understand everything. This, Susan, is a museum we went in, and that's cotton that was real popular in the Nantong area, and they're loading the cotton boats and that type of thing. I mean, pardon? <laughs> no, they knew, they, in fact, Claire Chenault, there's like a Disneyland Claire Chenault Park over there in, um, 
um, I can't think of that offhand which province that's in, but highly respected Claire Chenault. First one to take war to Japan. Yes. Before we could get into it. They thought he was probably. They made one of their major generals in the uh, Air Force over there. So Chiang Kai shek and him yeah. linked up. Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai shek actually, now my history is very limited here in Far East, but they were actually partners and doing well, and then they split and Chiang, after the war actually. And yes. Chiang Kai shek uh, actually, I was reading when I studied this recently actually lived in Taiwan and ruled China from Taiwan for a few months in my readings. Yeah. Okay. What did I do? Go backwards? I think so. Oh, there's that. That's part of the river. The big part of it's back here that we'll see. I hope I can show you that mountain I climbed up. There's the, ro there's the rope bridge. We're going to cross over. Yeah. I don't know if I have to. I think I have to move it. This was just a peaceful park. I had video audio with this, but it, there's birds flying in and out. It just didn't. So this was that um, dynasty uh, temple in the middle of Chengdu, and they had these slates uh, uh, carved in rock of all the battles. Yeah, that was the emperor. I, I should have his name when I present this, but I, I can look that up. My feet were so sore that day, I just wanted to sit down anywhere I could find. That was the day actually I was hurting, because that was the day after we went to the uh, Panda Research Center and the uh, irrigation system. That's that irrigation. There, the mountain was back there. Oh, this is an escalator. Not only do you climb the mountain, then you take like 12 escalators up to the peak of it. I mean, it just keeps going. I'm not even there yet. <laughs> yeah, that just showed you how high it was. Every time you say how far, he'd ask them, he'd say, oh, just around the corner. Well, there around the corner is like two more miles. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty cute. That'll last a few seconds if, if, I, if you don't mind me letting that play. Yeah. Well, they're an endangered species, as you know, and of course, they're, we didn't go into the actual research center. It was there, um, but they're trying to preserve the panda. As I understand, a lot of its um, habitat is being lost. This is pretty cute. He'll fall from anybody. Oh. <laughs> He's okay, though. I mean, you can stand there all day watching them. And this is just one set of them. For Christmas, J.C. Penney's here locally had these nice pandas on sale for like three ninety nine with a little red pouch. So I, I bought 10 of them for all my family, and I put all these about $50, $1 bills in the pouch for them and gave them that for Christmas. I don't know if it's a brother sister or he'll balance on that limb out there. I'm thinking, is this thing gonna break? Exactly. Okay, so I wonder where we should go next. All right, anybody have a guess? No, no, no. How about the doctor? <laughs> I went to this doctor's office next to the hotel, and he put in boiling water. And then they started banging on my feet. Oh, that hurt. I said, no, 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 no more, please. And so then he was showing me how he does cupping. I didn't know anything about that, but he does all that. And we didn't do the cupping. And I think the next slide, they put it in there for me. It's pretty cute because they're kind of comparing me to a panda bear, I think. Let's see. Let's see. We're getting ready for our flight home after all that walking. I think they're comparing the two. Wow. Yes, feet are good now, Chip. Whoa. Well, and you go, you saw that tall school, right? That elementary school that were like four or five floors. Um, they have an elevator somewhere, but 
No, they just hike. Okay, I'll trudge you up, and I'm dragging you out, hanging onto the rail. like. And so I get to the orphanage, and I, they say, we have your own room, and there's an actual Western-style toilet. And I thought, wonderful. But it's on like the fourth floor of the orphanage. <laughs> Why couldn't they have it on the first floor? I think this is the last photo. Come on. Yeah. That's actually at the research center. That's all bamboo they're growing to feed. The, I'm actually hanging up to that bamboo. Like, <laughs> take the picture. So that was my trip. I hope it was uh, interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. This video has been brought to you by Juice34. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming. When you pick Juice Internet, you get more. More quality service with free same-day installation. More options for packages, either standalone internet or bundled with cable TV. More hometown pride with employees and decision makers right here in Greenville. More reliability when you need it most. And more convenience with bills rolled in with your other utilities, along with easy drive through service. Nobody does internet like Juice. So when you're ready for more, you know who to call. Juice Internet. Hometown service. World-class reliability.